We all love fresh summer fruit, but in the winter, if you want to eat it, you'll have to get it out of a tin. The French started preserving foods in tins and jars more than 200 years ago. They needed to make rations last longer to feed their soldiers. But here in New Zealand, Māori have a much longer tradition of storing seasonal foods, and one way they did it was using seaweed. These are pohātiti uh, uh, containers for uh, preserving mutton birds, or titi. This is a finished example here with the bark on the outside, the kiri totara or totara bark, and a woven keti attached to the bottom. What you can't see inside of here is a kelp bag made of rimu rapa or bull kelp, which is hollowed out inside and then blown up, and that actually makes the bag that the titi are, are placed into. To Māori, mutton birds are a prized catch for eating and for their feathers and down. The season officially starts on the 1st of April, but there's plenty to do before then. In the lead up to the start of the season, a lot of preparation work would happen involving collecting lengths of rimurapa, the bull kelp. So you would cut them off into various lengths and in between the skin of them is a soft bubbly honeycomb structure which you can hollow out quite easily with your hand in there and your fingers and just hollow it down and leave an inch or so at the bottom and you have a bag essentially which you can blow up and hang for a day or so in the sun just to dry a bit and cure and then they're deflated, rolled up and put into uh, a cool place to store until you need them. The 36 tiny mutton bird or titi islands lie off the coast of Stewart Island. Local Māori have the rights to gather birds during the two month breeding season. They're the most abundant of New Zealand seabirds, so there's plenty that survive the harvest. My extended whānau have been catching birds or titi for generations. The whole idea is to collect the titi when they're abundant, and we're talking about the young birds, not the adults. They resemble big, fat, fluffy dumplings. <laughs> uh, they're still learning how to fly. Uh, at the start of the season, they're still down in their burrows, and uh, they call that the nano. Uh, part of the season when the way they're caught is to actually lie on the ground and reach down it and hook them out and that's quite hard work. I have had a go and it's very difficult actually when you've got your hand down the burrow because there's little ledges the birds can jump up on it's not as easy as it, as it might sound. They don't just sit, they won't just sit there and let you grab them. And then what do you do when you've got the bird out because it must be well, sort of flapping trying to get away. You kill it. <laughs> How do you do that? Just ring their neck. Ring the neck. Um, the old boys each to bite them on the back of the head. Right, so just a swift and yeah. that would be it. Then after a while they, they start to come out at night time and it's the rama or the torching uh, part of the season when uh, you can catch a lot, a, a lot more. They're easy to catch but uh, you might catch a hundred or so in a, in a night. That's half the work, then they all have to be processed. The old way of doing it is to take the wing bones out. You don't want to puncture your kelp bag. So they'd cut them up in a certain way so those bones we were uh, taken out, and then they'd boil them in, in wooden bowls or ipu, which uh, hot rocks are placed in there and they boil the water and the, the birds are placed in. So that cooks the birds and also um, boils some of the fat out of them. And then the birds are placed in here and the fat's poured in around them. And that preserves the, uh, the titi. So how many birds would they actually stuff into one of these poha? On average, 40 to 50 birds. They could be as many as uh, 110. So these are quite heavy, I mean, they'd be quite heavy. They would be quite heavy, yes. It has been said that the shape of the poha is ideal for throwing as well, kind of in a, a rugby pass type of throw, because down on the islands, they're quite rocky around the shores. There's no uh, beaches for landing on, so you, you have to throw what you have down onto a waiting boat. So how long would they then last once they were wrapped in fat, stuffed into these kelp bags and surrounded by bark? Oh, they could last a couple of years quite easily. For hundreds of years, all sorts of birds were preserved in kelp bags like this. Māori really were ahead of their time when it came to preserving food. But that's not all. With a poha balloon under each arm, they rode the crashing waves onto the Titi Islands near Stewart Island. They could have been the first ever boogie boarders.